morning. I am so very, very happy to be here and share this day with you. I appreciate the kind welcome that the ladies at Brighton gave me. And you know a little bit about me. Like they said, I'm Kelly Hewitt. And um, I feel like when I speak to a group that I look at all of your faces and see you smiling or sleeping, depending on my lesson. And <laughs> I feel like you're my friend when I speak with you. And so today I hope that you'll feel the same way toward me when we're having lunch or whatever, that, that we'll be able to make that connection together that I already feel with you when I get to speak with you and see see your faces. So I just feel like in the church, it is such an amazing blessing to be able to come to a building. I've never been here. Many of you I've never met, but you are my family. And that is pretty cool. I love it. Okay, so I get Jennifer said I could do a commercial. So we'll start with that. <laughs> um, Jennifer Willenbrecht, since it's the day of Jennifer's, um, Jennifer Willenbrecht and I... <laughs> started Oil in My Lamp Ministries a couple of years ago, and this year our first DVD series came out. So 21st Century Christian is our distributor, and we have um, a DVD and a study guide. There you go, study guide. That um, The reason we created these is for churches like all of us attend in Colorado and Utah and Wyoming and um, small places where we don't necessarily have um, 30 women signing up to teach ladies class. Um, this is just basically women's Bible class on DVD. No prep. You don't need to do anything. In addition to serving a ladies Bible class, we're hoping that this could be something that you might take into your home and invite your neighbors over and say, we would like to study the Bible. It's such a great way to say, um, instead of saying, hey, I've got all the answers about the Bible. Why don't you come to my house and I'll tell you them? It's such a great way to say, you know, these crazy ladies on here, what do you think about them and what are they saying about the Bible? So this series is called Losing It. Um, Jennifer and I felt like we were, and maybe you were too. <laughs> so that's, it's, these, these lessons are very practical about how to be the kind of Christian women that God wants us to be. Our next DVD series, which will hopefully come out this year, is called The Rock I Run To, and it's about the God that we can trust in times of trouble. Okay, commercial is over. I noticed that the lady that introduced me said three short lessons. She said it twice. <laughs> She's never heard me speak before. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put on a timer. <laughs> and when I have exceeded my time limit by 40 minutes, then, then I will stop. Okay. <laughs> you know... Today's lessons are going to be practical lessons that I hope, as I have done, as I've prepared them, that you can do, you can take these home and apply these ideas in your lives. Um, there's something wonderful about deep Bible study, and then there's something even more wonderful about the transformation that happens from Bible study. And I'm hoping that today what we come up with together is transformation so that you leave here changed, so that you don't walk out of here saying, yep, I know some more facts but that we can take the truth of the Bible and we can be women who are truly showing that beauty of Christ every day. You know, our, our topic today is able to bloom. And really, there is hardly anything on earth more beautiful than a flower in full bloom. I love roses and daisies, but especially peonies. Oh, they're so big and droopy and heavy when they're in full bloom. I just, I love them. There's really nothing like stepping into someone's beautiful garden. My grandma's here with me today, and she is a good gardener. Her garden always so beautiful. Mine's look kind of weedy and 
neglected. <laughs> but, <laughs> but isn't it lovely to go into a garden that is just so well tended and so blooming? Everything's so fragrant, and, and God has just created these perfect flowers in so many colors. And when I see a garden like that, this year specifically, so the things that I'm sharing today, these are journey things for me. This is what I said this year. I want to be like that in my soul. Like how you feel when you see that beautiful flower. I want my spiritual life to be full like that. I want to have so much Jesus in me that it's drooping over like that peony in full bloom, just so heavy on the stem. And you know what? I wasn't feeling that way. We don't always, do we? And I saw other women around me and I went, oh, they're so beautiful. It's like being in the same room as a garden with these women that were just spiritually blooming. And so this year I said, this is what I want to do. I want to go on a journey of blooming. And what is a blooming plant? A blooming plant is obviously a healthy one. The ones in my garden maybe don't bloom as often <laughs> because they're not as healthy uh, sometimes. So my mission today is to offer you and share with you how I journeyed on this way, simple suggestions to help you bloom spiritually today and in the future. Um, and to also help us when we find that we're not blooming. There are lovely women in here today who feel like they're in full bloom. Their spiritual life feels rich and full. And there are women in here that feel like it is winter all the time. Spiritually, you just feel so dry. And guess what? I feel like I can talk to both women today, wherever you are. So you'll see that I brought my quilt. My husband's great-grandma? This is my mother-in-law. Isn't it cool that I have so many supporters? I love it. Um... Great grandma then. My husband's great grandma made this quilt for him when he was born and I thought it was a neat example. So kind of look at the quilt and the beauty of the different patches. But this first lesson, I want to talk to us about a subject that is becoming more dear to me every day as I found the value of it to strengthen the bloom of my spiritual life. Now, how many in here are hungry or want or have wanted a mentor in their life? I have. I have. We're going to read in Titus 2, 3 to 5. We're not going to read a ton of scripture today, but we are going to read this one. Just to focus our minds on the idea of mentoring, we've all read this verse. In fact, there's probably been entire ladies' events kind of uh, focused on this particular verse. So Titus 2, and this morning Titus had vanished out of my Bible. I couldn't find it at all. <laughs> so if that's happening to you, it's all right. <laughs> Older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good. Okay, so we have this picture of the older woman. That... They may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be dishonored. Now that is a very beautiful verse. Whoops. And in church, we've often, I have often said, well, where is that woman? Come on, older women. Bring me the bloom, you know, where, where are you in my life? And I need encouragement to be the wife that I'm not every day. I need encouragement to love my children. I need a lot of encouragement to be sensible. But are you with me? Does it feel like these are not happening? How many in here would say, I have a full-time mentor? Not many of us. And the thing is, it says older women. Hmm. I am older than some in this room. 
Now there's probably someone in this room that has no one older. <laughs> we won't ask. <laughs> so I think what we can we come up with in the church is we feel this sort of divide. It's like I've got some issues, I've got some problems, I need some encouragement, and we've got women of all ages because you're always older than someone. If you're 14, you're older than someone who's 10. You are the older women. Obviously, we're not expecting them to, to espouse all of these things. But my point is that you're always older than someone. And in order to bloom, I want to, to look at mentoring in a totally new way. Because what we have is women who have needs and wants to grow. And we've got women who have gone through a lot. They have seen a lot of um, trials and troubles and they have walked the way of Christ. And, and there's like this gap where we're going, how come we're not connecting? How come we're not making this happen? How come I don't have this big relationship of, of mentoring? So check out my quilt and you'll see that the beauty of this quilt is, is in its multicolors, isn't it? It's got blue and yellow and pink and purple and um, orange. And you can see that it's basically a work of art. It's something I could never create. And some of you have created things just as beautiful. But to the eye, it is so pleasing. But also, it's so useful to um, warm up in, to decorate your home. Uh, quilts are just very, very intriguing to me. Rather than seeing mentoring as one big relationship that just changes everything in your life, I suggest to us that we begin to look at mentoring connections in the church as a quilt made up of pieces of colorful interactions that we have with each other. We're going to look at mentoring connections instead of being one big thing, one big relationship where I can say, that woman, Sue Sparks, she's my mentor. We don't really have that opportunity very often. I want us to change our mind and say, mentoring is like this quilt. It's these beautiful connections that you might make with me today, that I might make with you today, and I'm going to take all of those opportunities and I'm going to sew those together into a quilt built on the beauty of women's experiences that they share with me, and that's going to keep me warm when I need to bloom. Today I want to offer you just quickly five suggestions for creating a mentoring environment in your life. Gleaning wisdom um, from the women in our lives starts with a word that I'll probably use a thousand times today, intentional. It's such a significant word because we have to be intentional about everything if we want to bloom. In Colorado, you do not put a seed in the ground and walk away and go, yep, there'll be a garden there, right? I mean, maybe that happens in Alabama. <laughs> and then you're hacking it down going, I wish it would quit growing. Um, not so here. Not so here. And isn't our spiritual life so like that? We have the seed planted in us, and if we don't intentionally cultivate we will not bloom. That is what I found in my own season is that I had missed the intentionality of these kinds of things. What I learned about mentoring is that older women, women older than me, are not going to just walk up to me and be like, here's your advice. <laughs> Thank you for not doing that. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen places where I could improve. But they don't. They don't. They don't just walk up to a young mother and say, well, here's, you know, seven things to do with your kids, or I saw you disrespecting your husband over there, and here's, here's some wisdom that, that you could have from me. We're not getting that connection going. 
can you imagine what your response would be if that happened? <laughs> it would not be pretty. But I do know that many older women are eager to share. They're eager to tell us younger women what they've gone through, what they've suffered, how they've been victorious. They're eager to share their own bloom, but we have to invite them into our lives. We have to say, would you, would you make a patch for my quilt? Would you, would, would you do that for me? We have to be very intentional about mentoring. We have to stop putting the burden at the older women's feet. And we need to say, I want to bloom. I take responsibility for blooming and I am going to seek that out. That's where we've had the breakdown. We put all of the burden on the older women and us younger women are like, yeah, you're not mentoring me. No, we have to change that. We have to seek that mentoring out intentionally. My timer went kaput. Oh, I got lots of time. <laughs> I've heard women actually whining that maybe the older generation has failed us. And I'm so sorry if, if you have heard that from anyone that's my age. If you've heard that you've failed us, I disagree. I feel like we have failed to bring you into our lives to say what you have is valuable. And I can talk to the older women in here because they understand that other women have valuable things to help them grow too. I really believe that God is going to bless us when we start looking at mentoring in the way of a quilt. So Number one, if you want to create a mentor quilt in your life, you need to intentionally start praying for opportunities to be mentored. You need to pray, we all need to pray for an open and humble heart. Growth that we experience only comes in fertile soil. If I'm not ready to receive your, your advice, it will just bounce off, right? If, if I have cultivated the soil of my heart and said, I realize that I have some issues, I have some places that need a woman to come in and show me how to be not a gossip. I need a woman to come in and show me how to be a worker at home. When I have humbled myself through prayer, I will find that when those quilt pieces come, I'm going to be receptive to those. I want you to also think about, um, I consider myself to be a speaker and a communicator. That's what I feel like God has, has given me to do, and I adore speaking with women. I love it. It's the love of my heart. Not everyone is a great communicator, right? We have all different kinds of personalities. In the garden, we've got all different kinds of flowers. Have you ever admired the purple flower of a thistle? I have. There are some women who are thistly, but still, still beautiful, right? When they're blooming, they have value, and the bees will still visit those thistle flowers to get nectar. So we need to be able to sift through maybe some of that outdated stuff like we always laid our baby on the back. We always laid our baby on the stomach. Blah, blah, blah. Be able to sift through. Pray that God will give you the wisdom to sift through maybe some of that that doesn't fit with the times, that feels outdated, and you're going to find that nugget of truth in that interaction. That's your quilt piece. That's the piece that you're going to take home and go, this made a difference in my life because they said something about um, just that little something that helped them get up every day with their kids, that little something that helped them keep going at work when work was hard, that little tiny bit of keep going, that, that little something that helped them take care of that aging parent. Whatever it is, there's there is so much good to be found when we interact with each other intentionally. So your next bullet point is to make simple connections with potential mentors. 
And what I have found is there are personalities that I get along with really well. And of course, you'll all agree with me, there are personalities that we don't click as easily. And I'll tell you what, I get quilt pieces from both. If I'm humble and if I'm intentionally looking for them to say something. The crazy thing is, is I don't walk up to someone and say, hello, Sue, would you like to mentor me today? (laughs) What I do is, it's not an interview. It's not a lecture, is it? It's just a connection. It's just a, hey, could I bring coffee over to your house for like 20 minutes? Do you like coffee? Do you want some scones? Stop by, don't take a lot of time get some Starbucks, grab a little package of scones, and just show up at that woman's house. Hey, don't show up uninvited, but make those little connections with women that you see. You know what? I see some bloom in her. I see something really beautiful there, and that's something that could help me bloom. And you don't have to say, you know, hey, I'm here for mentoring. All you do is just make that casual conversation, make that connection, because that's often where I've yielded those quilt pieces of wisdom. Another thing you could do is just call that woman. They are thrilled when I do this. I just pick up the phone and I think, you know what, I'm going to talk for maybe 15 minutes. Sometimes these connections are not like yielding how to get through cancer or something like that. But over time, I'm waiting for that nugget and I'm always blown away by it. One time, this older woman called me and her and I have a good relationship. She called me about something, you know, a church thing, you know, can you bring suckers to the kids class or something? And um, we got to, to talking and I, I stopped myself and I thought, she's on the phone with me right now. I could maybe get a quilt piece, you know? And anyway, we started talking and that small conversation, 20 minutes, I learned more about grief than I've ever learned before in what she was saying about how she was dealing with the grief in her life that I didn't realize it was the anniversary of a day of grief for her. And I learned so much just in that very small, very small conversation. Um, in addition to those kinds of things, which take some effort outside of church, at church functions, potlucks while you're standing in the pew, you don't need to just sit with your kids or your people. You see those women who bloom. I know you do. You see them and you think, wow, that, that's what I want to look like when my garden is in full bloom. You just seek those out. Mentoring quilt pieces don't come from relationships where there isn't trust. And we have to build those trusting relationships. Somehow, we have lost the art of friendship. We don't know how to befriend anyone anymore. And to really create a Titus II kind of environment at our churches, we have to pick that back up. And we have to to come with an open mind and a humble heart. Our third bullet point, once you've established that relationship with that older woman or older women with younger women, same age women, one of my biggest mentors is Jennifer. Um, We share a lot of times together that way. But once you've established this relationship, ask good questions. Be prepared like a little reporter with your little secret book, you don't need to ask them in in a way that makes a woman uncomfortable. But here's the thing. Every time that I have asked a woman that I have any sort of relationship with, a question about something personal or how she dealt with something, that woman has opened up to me and shared that story with me. Sometimes I didn't need to hear that, right? It's something maybe I already knew. That's okay. You learned more about her. But every now and again, see, because mentoring isn't that big relationship with that one woman that just changes your whole world. It's this. It's this quilt piece, beauty in all the little different bits. 
So once you've established this relationship, take time to ask really good questions. Maybe start with some easy ones. How did you get your kids to sleep at night? Or how did you um, help your aging mother understand that she couldn't live by herself anymore? Um, and then you can ask the more difficult ones. After a while, you can ask difficult questions. And seriously, don't be afraid to do it. I've never, ever met a wise woman who would not answer my question when I said, I'm humbly looking for something. I am the second part of this. I'm seeking wisdom for you. And of course, we don't box it up like that. Hey, I'm seeking wisdom. You just are getting it from your interaction with her. And how beautiful is that? What would our churches begin to look like? We all know that women are the powerhouses behind all good things, right? We know that if we started to do this, we could change lives. We could change the church. We can, we can wrap everybody in this wonderful, wonderful quilt. Um, bullet point number four. This is something that I, I do good at one part and then not do good at the other part. Um, well, maybe I don't do good at either part, but listen and journal. So we have to be willing to pause and say, hmm, I might get a piece for my quilt out of this interaction here. I need to really listen right here from my heart to what she's saying. She may be speaking in a language that isn't, um, it isn't thrilling to me but she may be sharing something that's very important. And we have to listen to one another, really and truly listen. When we're talking, if we're going to be ma making this quilt, the other part is the part that I'm bad at, but I'm getting better. Um, write down what they said. Just get, you know, a dollar store little journal, put mentoring on it with a Sharpie. Some of you will make it so beautiful. <laughs> For me, it's just mentoring. Flip that open, and every time you get a quilt piece, you write down, um, somebody said, um, there is one thing that carries me through grief, and that is Jesus Christ never leaving my side. I heard that from a woman who lost her son. And I was like blown away by that little nugget going that woman is in full bloom even in the toughest day of her life. Write those down. Don't forget to write them down because you'll forget them. You'll go, oh no, I, I knew a lady that went through this and I don't remember what she said. So intentionality again about the mentoring and how that can bloom our lives. Imagine what your journal would tell you. Your journal begins to show this quilt of relationships in the church so beautiful so colorful so that's bullet point number four add to your quilt by writing it down I don't know you might write it down in the back of your bible you might whatever it is you could start a little journal for your daughter you could teach her to make these mentoring connections it's never too late to start one either because it's so shocking to me sometimes what I'll learn from my children about life and how they see life and I'll put that down in my little mentoring journal too. Bullet point number five, pray diligently for the women that you've chosen to seek out. So yes, we can get mentoring connections anytime, any place, but there are, wouldn't you agree, those special women in your congregations that you just go, she's going to add a lot of pieces to my quote. She's going to be special. I can, I urge you to pray for that woman because she is going through things too. She is struggling with her husband and her problems and her parents and her children. She is struggling. And then when you're ready, ask her to pray for you too. Tell her, did you know that two months ago you added a piece to my mentoring quilt? And I'd really like you to pray about that. That is the beauty of mentoring. I want you to remember two things about mentoring as we close our time for this first lesson. One, it's not always the one relationship that changes everything. 
It's a patchwork quilt of different interactions. And number two, it's an intentional connection that starts with us no matter how old we are. God promises to give us wisdom and you can start creating a mentoring quilt that will help you to bloom and increase your spiritual bloom. Later on today, we're going to talk about some other ways to increase our spiritual bloom, and I hope that you'll hang around for that.